Morning Show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us on a day when um, millions and millions of co-workers in America quietly resent the winner of their March Madness office pool. We forgot to even do one this year, which I think makes us all winners. You know, we didn't lose 10 bucks, but did you watch that game last night, Gero? Yes, Jimmy, it was a great game. You enjoyed it? Yes, I did. The um, Kansas Jayhawks came back from being down 15 points at the halftime to beat North Carolina. It was an incredible comeback. Uh, halftime, the coach, Bill Self, uh, from Kansas, gathered the team together. He told them, look deep inside, summon every bit of confidence and strength, use all the tools that got you this far, and if you win, I'll get you all Chuck E. Cheese. And it worked. They won. <laughs> they won. Biggest comeback in NCAA Finals history. And the real winner was my wife, Molly, who three weeks ago tonight, moments after correctly picking who would be the last woman standing on The Bachelor, made this stunning prediction. My wife, Molly, at the beginning of the season, predicts who she believes will get the final rose, and the one she picked was Susie. To my Rose Shadonna. Congratulations. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you, Molly. Molly, yeah. who's gonna win the NCAA tournament? We should make some money off of this. Kansas. Uh, all right. And sure enough, Kansas won the NCAA tournament, so congrats. I think it's time we move back to Las Vegas. In fairness, Molly went to Kansas, so she would have picked them even if they weren't in the tournament. Probably didn't even know they were in the tournament, yes? How dare you. Our kids were watching the game with us last night. Our daughter, uh, well, our daughter Jane, who's seven, was watching. Our son was running around in front of the TV showing us his butt, but Jane <laughs> got really into it. She's doing the uh, rock chalk thing, which is still nonsensical, I don't know. But then, then, two minutes left in the game, she begs us to turn the television off. She said, I really can't take it if they lose. Please turn it off. <laughs> so we had to sit her down. We told her, you know, everybody loses. Daddy loses every night. It's a part of life. <laughs> but the important thing is, I want to know who you think will win the NBA Finals this year. Oh, um, the 76ers. It's Philadelphia 76ers, all yeah, right. Why not? That's a reasonable bet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to bet on that, and if you're wrong, we uh, will sell all your shoes. OK. OK. Deal. Deal. The last time Kansas won the tournament was, by the way, she works here. She doesn't just hang around. <laughs> that be weird? Yeah, no, OK. <laughs> Waiting for daddy to finish. <laughs> Um, so the last time Kansas won uh, was 2008, which was the year Obama was elected, and President Obama returned to the White House today for the first time since he left office. That's really got to bother Trump. All these lies and schemes and lawsuits to get back to the White House, Obama just strolls right in there. <laughs> and Obama was there uh, celebrating the 12 year anniversary of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, and also to help Joe set up his Roku. And somehow, <laughs> somehow they managed to strike just exactly the right balance of affection and confusion. Thank you, Vice President Biden, Vice President. <laughs> that was a joke. That was all set up. Yeah. It was great to see them. It was like the white men can't jump reunion at the Oscars. And then it was all great until the end when everyone gathered around Obama and there was no one for Jill. the saddest damn thing you've ever seen in your life? I mean, really. He just... He was found two hours later wandering around the garden department at Lowe's. <laughs> Over the weekend, workers at uh, an Amazon fulfillment center in Staten Island were able to successfully unionize. It's the first Amazon union. And... The new president of the union said something funny. The president of the union said, we want to thank Jeff Bezos for going into space because when he was up there, we were signing people up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Amazon's had a tumultuous relationship with their employees. There's a story that leaked that says Amazon was working on an internal messaging app to boost morale, but the company, internal company documents 
revealed they plan to block words that could be inflammatory like union and plantation. The filter would prevent those words from being posted. It's funny, you know, we thought Big Brother would look like this. Turns out he, he looks more like this, heart-shaped glasses and all. <laughs> of course, Amazon's pushing back. They say this isn't true, but we're able to get the full list of banned words. Uh, Guillermo actually hacked into their system. How did you do that, Guillermo? Oh, my assistant, Mike Chaffee, helped Your me. assistant did that Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so these are all words Amazon will not allow. Unions, strike, wages, restrooms, pee bottles, empty Dasani, bladder infections, happiness, life outside of work, home, going home, I think I live at home but can't remember, help, help us, penis rocket, overcompensating, dork, space dork, bald space dork, and I want to have sex with Alexa. All, none of those will, you know, another, I don't know how Alexa got caught up in that, but. Tesla CEO Elon Musk today joined the board of directors at Twitter. He bought a 9% stake in the company, valued at almost $3 billion, and they gave him a seat on the board, which is quite a flip when you consider the fact that in July of 2020, he tweeted, Twitter sucks. And now he <laughs> bought $2.9 billion worth of it. Now that he's on the board, some conservatives are calling on him to reinstate Donald Trump's Twitter account which is, I think, unnecessary because Trump has his own super successful media platform, Truth Social, which Truth Social is to Twitter what a broken Sega Genesis is to TikTok. Even <laughs> Donald Trump himself isn't using this social media. He posted on it one time and that was it. They launched in February. You still can't get on it. One of the guys in our office signed up when it launched. He's still stuck at number 1,295,000 on the wait list. It hasn't moved up one spot. Trump raised a huge amount of money to launch this. It's basically an inactive AOL message board right now. <laughs> Devin Nunes, remember that guy? He left Congress to run this company. He can't even get it up. Um, and yes, I, I do get it. But of course, one of the big league reasons Fibonacci gets away with all this is because of the nonstop propaganda he gets from Fox News. According to a new study from political scientists at Stanford and Yale, Fox News viewers who were paid to watch CNN seven hours a week for 30 days actually changed their minds on a variety of issues like COVID, Black Lives Matter, Fox News itself, and even Trump. They were also 40% less likely after watching for 30 days to buy one of those old people shower tubs <laughs> that Terry Bradshaw is in, but it's interesting, isn't it? It's good news. All we have to do to get people to stop believing that nonsense is to pay them to watch another channel. But they love that Fox News. Laura Trump, who a woman whose resume includes marrying Eric Trump and ends right there, was on Hannity again. Why? I don't know. I guess just to remind us that her father-in-law is right about everything. Donald Trump is right again. I'm still not tired <laughs> of saying that because every time the things that he talks about, he is spot on. Is it me or her lips getting bigger? <laughs> Meanwhile, the tan of La Mancha was on another show nobody's ever watched to lash out once again at windmills. These climate extremists, uh, they don't get it. And they're destroying our country with the windmills on the, you know, next to every house. If you look at what, what wind is doing to our beautiful, our once beautiful fields mm -hmm. and our beautiful, healthy eagles and birds, mm -hmm. what's happening to this country is, is shock. It's just shocking. They're... <laughs> There are windmills next to every house? That is shocking. Think about that. This man, on his top five list of problems in this country, one of them, the one maybe he talks about most, is windmills. This is like being angry at butter churns. And I guess we're just used to it. I mentioned last night, Donald Trump endorsed Sarah Palin, who's now running for Congress in Alaska. And it reminded me of a story that I think haunts Trump to this day. This is back in 2011. Remember when he went to lunch with Sarah Palin and ate pizza with a knife and fork? Well, if you don't, he does. And so much so, he cannot stop defending himself about it. A lot of people are asking about why am I using plastic forks and knives that the pizza parlor gave? Well, I don't walk around with forks and knives. And frankly, it was very comfortable. I don't know if Sarah Palin's running. I really like her a lot. I mean, I think she's a very good woman. We had the famous pizza incident where we had pizza and I was using a fork. I was very impressed today with Mitt Romney. As you know, with the great pizza incident, I met with uh, Sarah Palin. Plus, this way you can take the top of the pizza off. You're not just eating the crust. She came up to the apartment and 
We then went with our families to a pizza place. She said, let's have some pizza between Pizza Gate and uh, Anthony Wiener Gate. I found Anthony Wiener Gate to be a terrible situation. I like not to eat the crust so that we keep the weight down at least as good as possible. But she's a terrific woman. We had a terrific time. <laughs> we had as much fun as you can have eating pizza with a fork. And that's why she should be in the House of Representatives. Nowadays, Sarah Paley, she seems downright quaint compared to the monsters that are uh, in the House, like Marjorie Taylor Greene. This woman, Klan mom, is especially upset <laughs> with the three Republican senators who said they'll vote yes on Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, who's nominated for the Supreme Court. She tweeted, Murkowski, Collins, and Romney are pro-pedophile. They just voted for KBJ. Wow, where is Will Smith when you really need him, huh? <laughs> I mean, Besides that being disgusting, this woman is good pals with Matt Gates, who is currently under investigation for trafficking minors for sex. It's scum and scummer. It's, you know, Marjorie re represents the uh, 14th District of Georgia, where the state Senate passed a bill that will limit discussions about race from kindergarten to 12th grade. The bill would prohibit schools and local school systems from advocating divisive concepts. In other words, don't talk about racism, and there won't be any, I guess. Instead, said there will be a focus on what lawmakers call patriotic education. The governor, Brian Kemp, will almost certainly sign this into law. And the Georgia Department of Education has already started making new instructional videos to help history teachers comply. The Georgia Department of Education presents American History, White People Edition. <laughs> America was founded in 1776 when Jesus Washington landed on Mount Rushmore to declare, I have a dream. These are the founding fathers. As you can see, they are all white. Not like Hamilton at all. Later, there was a civil war between two good sides. 1862, President Lincoln signs the Emancipation Proclamation, making America officially not racist. And Lincoln was a Republican. Which means Republicans love black people the most. Go ahead and sit up front, Rosa. You're welcome. 1964, Lyndon Johnson signs the Civil Rights Act, making America officially totally not racist for real. 1980, the Gipper makes America great. 2008, Barack Obama f***s it up. 2016, Trump makes it great again! But then Brandon <laughs> the bed, and now everything sucks forever! The American dream is dead. And that's American History White People Edition! Brought to you by the Georgia Department of Education, which reminds you, <laughs> teachers eat peaches! <laughs> and eat your heart out, Schoolhouse Rock. If you like that video, click subscribe and we'll be together until one of us dies.